Not record. There we go. Somebody say hey, something. Oh, huh? what? What? <laughs> Hey everyone, these are the three Black Pratt grad photographers. I am Mark Skinner and I am here with Greg Cleghorn and Ken Nelson. This time we are going to be talking about cropping. It's called Cut That Out! <laughs> Every photographer has to kind of grapple with the idea of whether they should photograph full frame or should they cro photograph to crop later. Now at Pratt, one of the things that we all learned was you should photograph to the full frame, always, 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 always. But in the 30 some odd years since, we may have done some cropping and we have examples of how cropping can change the message of your photo, or maybe it doesn't. You guys can tell us. In any event, we're gonna start with some images. All right. This is a full frame photograph of the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a very long exposure, not that you really care, but it's 11 seconds at F32 at 100 ISO, and it was done uh, at dusk about a month ago. If you go to the next, this is the same photograph cropped to look like 35 millimeter full frame image vertical okay put it in next one okay all right so what this does is it focuses the eye right on the bridge cuts out some of the extraneous material on either side particularly the building on the left that was in the previous image and some of the buildings that were on the right near the lower right hand quadrant of the of the frame so okay. put it in the next one I'm, I'm gonna go right through these because there's a, there's only a few now mm. this is the exact same format as the original full sensor image that you saw earlier, but it's been turned to a horizontal shape. And once again, it's cropped only to the bottom left-hand corner. And so now you can see that most of the bridge isn't there. You can see, you get a sense of scale because there are some people who are sort of ghosted in the uh, lower center part of the frame. Mm -hmm. It's 11 second exposure. As you can see, it's kind of a, Almost night, it's dusk. So we can go to the next one. Mm. And this is the same basic photograph as before because it's horizontal, but it's a little bit closer. And this is formatted to look like a 35 millimeter full frame horizontal image. Got next it. one. Wow. When you say formatted, what do you what do you mean? Like a, the well, what ratio, done, aspect ratio? Or? Exactly. What I've done is I've changed the aspect ratio in the cropping tool in my image editing program so that I can post. Repl and post, and post, right. Yep, in post to, to take that one photograph that you saw in the very beginning and to crop it in a way so it looked like other uh, formats. But the main thing is, is I want to show how cropping will change your image. Okay. Now. If you look at this one, Facebook cover style uh, size page of uh, image. Hey, Mark. Right? Yep. Mark, can you go back to start again for this particular image? We lost you. Oh, okay. Go, go, go back. Which one? Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah this, this, yeah, this particular image is uh, cropped to look like a, a a Facebook cover, or some photographers will know as the XPan format. Uh, it's basically the, the same format that you would see. It's the same image as before, but I used a cropping tool just to crop to get only the bridge and the sky. And because it's so close, you get a little bit more impact. And you go, oh, wow, that's the Brooklyn Bridge. It's unmistakably the Brooklyn Bridge based on those two arches. Mm -hmm. And there's no other information. And there's nothing. You're not seeing a scenic. You know it's just the bridge. And you go to the next one. There's only two more. Mm -hmm. mm. And this is a square. Uh, squares are very popular, particularly on Instagram. Prior to that, they were uh, known for the Hasselblad style photograph uh, that photographers knew to be the two and a quarter format for negatives and slides. But in this case, once again, you have the, the bridge. But 
you see the bridge oh, and the scaffolding on the side. In the previous image, you didn't even see the scaffolding that's that's on the side of the of the structure at this point in time. And one last. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Now this is an extreme close up. If you remember one of our other episodes, we talked about abstracts. So you get an abstract image based on just a small crop, the same format as the original image, but cut to the point where it's only a detail of the building that's on the left side of the bridge. The bridge isn't here at all. You can tell that it's uh, sort of like glass blocks or glass panes of some that's sort. That's the Brooklyn Bridge? That's not the bridge at all. The building on the left oh. of the bridge of the original image is what you're seeing. And yeah. if you go all the way back to that first one, you'll see how, how, how small a detail that is. I'll take your word for it. So that's really it. There you go. Now you'll see it's on the left, about two-thirds of the way up the frame. Yeah, it's right yeah, here. Right there. There you go. And that's the same, it's the same aspect ratio. And that's just cropping all of the bridge out. And so cropping all the bridge out, I got a completely different photograph. You don't even really notice it in the original, but if you crop to that point. And that's really it. Man, you gave me a face cramp, man. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm sure I'm sure you guys have images that are a lot more uh, uh, important, and you're going to talk about the aesthetics of how uh, uh, you know cropping really works. But for me, I just wanted to take one image and show the variety of ways that it, it it's cropped or can be cropped to uh, for specific effects. Yeah. Now I have my first question is about this one uh -huh. because what you basically did was you took a section and right. for for it was an arbitrary section of the photograph. Uh, because uh, you, you could have taken any section right. in, in a in a quadrant uh, from right. the top to the bottom and selected it to do that with. Right. But you chose to use this. Right. For right. The purposes it, of identifying the bridge. Right. Identifying the bridge, knowing that none of the other structures would be in the frame, and not even the roadway would be in the frame. And I, I, you know, you might even see this on my uh, Facebook page in a couple of days or okay. as a, as a cover, you know, uh, maybe in a week or two, maybe later, you know, uh, or I might do something else completely different. But the idea is that you can crop an image. Now, most of us would say you got to shoot full frame. And that's how I really, really like to work is shoot to the full frame. But I'm just showing that there are a lot of times when in, in actuality, you, you can shoot full frame, but. You know, there are sometimes when sometimes the photograph looks more engaging when you when you crop. And for me, the rule of thumb is try to shoot full frame as much as humanly possible. But if you just can't do that, ideally, you should know that you're going to crop ahead of time. But sometimes when you, you see it in the, your image editing uh, suite, you kind of go, you know, it would look much better if I cut something out. And I tend not to cut that much out of a photograph. But I, I use I use these uh, exaggerated croppings to uh, illustrate the point. Okay. Oh wow! I am good. Go ahead, Greg. No, I got nothing. No, you got nothing. No, no. I mean, it's, it's no. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys have stuff that's more aesthetically interesting than this. I mean, no, I just no. Uh, it's not about aesthetics at all because I think you presented a a very well well done image. I mean, it's aesthetically pleasing. It has nice balance, the full frame version, and you know, you started with that and you worked your way through. And all the things that you talked about are the technical aspects that you've subscribed to to make things happen within the frame for one image seven different version of that image and it's just uh, it's it's amazing to be able to do that to section off pieces of your image for different purposes and different formats from one image i think that's a great idea All right well uh, I, I tried to go as quickly as i can because i want to talk to you guys about the ethics of whether or not we should crop okay the ethics of cropping yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah okay all right hey greg we yes, got you sir. Back, right Yes, sir. I'll go. Okay. So we're going to go with you first. And so yeah. here you got your first so image. Zoom up out. Here. Zoom out. I, I, that's like way cropped. Is that full full image that's, for you? That's guys? full image. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, well, for me, uh, I always felt the uh, 
crop to crop or not to crop that is the question you know whether it is noble or in the you know but it's like a it's a um it's a choice the, the photographer's choice or the artist's choice what to crop and what not to crop like this one i, I kind of you know you know had like a a vacation scene you know cruise ships in the background you know people in the jet skis Atlantis in the far background, you know, on a jet ski in the foreground and, uh, you know, looking through a snorkeling mask. But, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have a C-stand and gaff tape or anything, so I had to hold it. So, uh, but I don't want my final to be, you know, to have my hand in the picture. So, go to the next one. No, I just pulled in a little bit and made, made the, uh, it's a slight crop. But uh, for me, it's less distracting that um, that my hand is not in the shot now. So I have the idea of, you know, seeing the world through a snorkel mask, you know, the jet ski and a lot of activity going on um, without much going on. But then visually to uh, have um, have the image be more about what's in the image, what's in the frame rather than extraneous stuff, you know, distracting the eye, making you think, gee, what, what is that? Is that his thumb? Is that, is that a body on the left? You know, so, so for me, it's a uh, judgment call. It's a uh, uh, editorial call. You can go to the next one. Okay. And this is the same thing. You know, um, you have a, a craftswoman or craftsperson, you know, doing her thing. And uh, I definitely wanted to get the picture of her just as a candid before, um, you know, she looked up and, I don't know, asked me for a donation or, or waved me off or, you know, or smiled or something. I just wanted to get her, you know, uh, you know, cinema verite, just as she is, you know. And um, in doing so, you know, in the full frame, wow, look at that. I got a big Poland picture. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, if you say, oh, it's, you know, full frame, you know, you got to shoot it as you get it. If that's what you got, that's what you got. Eh, not in my book, not in my world. So um, go to the next one, you know, and I uh, just uh, cropped it out, went in, pumped the color up, you know, took some shadows out. And I have, uh, like Mark is saying, a more aesthetically pleasing image more focused. I got my dominant, subdominant. You know, the colors are popping. You know, reds and greens and yellows and blues. And uh, you know, this woman doing her her thing. And uh, for me, you know, I I I kind of I kind of understand the aesthetic of the full frame when it's appropriate. You know, for landscapes or a certain other you know imagery. But for me, as kind of as a you know, with my photojournalism training and editorializing uh, images, you know, it's it's what's in the image that, that matters. And if you need to focus the image by, by cropping or dodging and burning or um, any number of, um, you know, accepted techniques, I say, why not? You know, I like the possibilities more than more than the facts of the full frame, because they're like full frame Nazis. It's like it's not a it's not a photograph unless you you shoot full frame. I had a friend who went back, <laughs> came back to Brooklyn, and the guy looked at my lens. He's like, "Oh, you know that's not a full frame." It's like, you know, if I if I printed it out, I would challenge you and put money on the on the barrel head. Could you tell the difference between a full frame image or an image I cropped? I would challenge you to do it. So there it is. That's that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I, I I think you selected perfect examples. You know, basically you saw your image, you took your photo, right? You got your capture, and then you saw these uh, extra material that didn't add to your to your vision, and yeah. you said, "Cut that out." Yeah, cut that out. That's what I said. And and then you 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 remove them in a way that didn't look like something's missing. Mm. Yeah. Except the pole. Yeah. Right. Right. But if, if I was never there, 
since right. I've never been there, I would not, I, you know, I, I would not know, you know. Yeah. And it's extraneous, you know, even, even if you crop just inside, you know, you got that box in the background, all that is like extra information that, you know, it's like writing a, writing a novel or an essay. One thing that kind of drove me crazy about uh, Mr. King, Stephen, the, the great writer, he'll get going and you're thinking, and then next thing you know, he makes a left turn and you're like, wait, what is, how does this fit to the story? Right. Same thing for me visually. You know, if there's something that's distracting to my eye, I would, I would rather get rid of it, you know, and uh, work with a work with a uh, tighter composition than to, um, you know, than to uh, kind of force it. That and, you know, what working, again, in uh, editorial stuff, you know, if you have uh, front page full, like you were talking about the Brooklyn Breach picture, if you have a front page full and you shot them all horizontal as being true to, you know, uh, the, the, the horizontal aesthetic of 35 millimeter photography. But the editor says, I've got to fill a, a, a seven by five, you know, and you got to zoom in and crop to make it fit the ads or well, not ad space, but the editorial space. What are you going to do? You're going to lose some of your image, but you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, well, but that depends on that depends on whether or not you're. And you know, you're saying, "Oh, the sanctity of my frame must be paramount." Right. Then, uh, where you're, that kind of limits your uh, your uh, forums for your work. You know, right? That, but that, but what you're talking about was with the, sometimes you're going to lose it. You're but what you're talking about a magazine, sometimes you're going to lose parts of your image. But uh, what you're talking you about gallery work, you do what you like. You know. Full frame. These are all full framed, and you could be proud of that. And that's that's all good. I'm just saying we just suit the image to the medium, and uh, I think cropping is a necessary part of the photographic and artistic expression. Right, but what you're talking that's about with I the got. with the editor, I got plenty more, but that's that's all I have to say. About that. That's okay, but what you're talking about with the editor is you're talking about the idea that the, the, with a static. Did I lose you guys? No, no. no yeah. you're, you're talking about with a static image. Did right? I put you to sleep? No. No. <laughs> no. I can't hear you. Oh, hold, on. hold on. I said with a you're talking about with a static image, correct? I mean, you you know, the vertical versus the horizontal. I mean, with an active image where you only have the, the you know, the best frame. Oh, there you are. Where, where the what best frame. No, I was saying what you're talking about is where you have uh, 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 a kinetic image. It's someone uh, someone moving, something moving where you may have multiple frames and only one image. Uh, is the one that you really want, but you're 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 rotating the the format to fit the copy sp the space that allows for proper copy. That's one example. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes, okay. The editorial space. You know, right. sometimes you may have to lose. Like I could see this becoming a vertical image if if the layout of the uh, publication won't allow for all of that. You know, all of that space on the left. See, I love I love the fact that you ha you included the milk crates. I love that, and then the fabric, and it gives you a sense of the space in which this individual works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. yeah. One the thing though that intrigues me, Greg, is the intent versus the result. So the intent, the intent was the intent was to get as close as possible without disturbing the person, right? So that's what you mentioned. You didn't want to. Uh, disturb what she was doing and to affect the outcome. So therefore, what you did was you you consciously did not move forward to physically crop out that extraneous stuff in the camera, right? Uh, so as not to in, involve yourself in the frame and affect the outcome of the image. So right. therefore, as an, and later on, you had to in essence crop those extraneous things out that you did not crop out when you looked through the camera. Right. So, right. So what you did was, in essence, you're correcting uh, uh, a misstep in some ways because you weren't able to achieve a result in camera. Misstep? I don't think it was a misstep. You weren't able to achieve you weren't able to achieve the result in camera due to aesthetic things that were happening. You did not want to uh, affect the outcome of the image by having her change what she was doing. Yeah, change so her demeanor, change her... 
Therefore, okay. you, you were basically restricted to staying back mentally in your head. Well, no. I mean, I could have gone forward. forward. I did, eventually, I did move forward. But, okay. Um, for the for the purpose of this exercise, I I got I, I showed the first two images that I got. Okay. You know, and the okay. first one image had the uh, had that pole in it because I I didn't I didn't want her to change demeanor because she was on camera. Yeah. I apologize you know. for interrupting earlier, Greg. Right. No, okay. I don't remember you interrupting. I didn't. Yeah. I kind of lost. What What did you say? I was just blathering on about some other thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what? What? No, no, I missed it. No, no, but okay. my my headphone might not have been working properly. That's okay. Oh, okay. Um, was it something good? Did I miss something good? <laughs> no, no, I I just repeated it when you were done. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I my 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 prime thing was uh, I didn't want to disturb her and change her demeanor. Um, because she saw the camera, right? You know, because she right. would smile, or she adjusted, or you know, started mugging. I wanted her just the way she was, you know. Um, right. And uh, I mean, the other stuff, I, I didn't want to get closer, but um, I think I, I got the I got the image that I wanted. So yeah. go ahead. I, I understand. You know, right. Step, because I, that, I mean, it happens to me all the time, which is. I know that I don't want to affect the outcome of an image by involving getting too close because then the the dynamics of the of the what you're trying to achieve changes. So right. therefore you accept the distance as 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 that and work to crop in. So um, what I, I guess what I'm saying is I I understand where you're coming from when you do that. Right. And um, you're you'll ultimately if you do if you don't photograph before getting too close. Right. You miss your decisive moment, and we talked about the moment before, uh, in the previous show. You know, the idea is that when you're photographing uh, in life with individuals who are not there specifically for you to photograph them, right. you, you you're trying to capture you know everyone uh, as they are, and yeah. you're not trying to uh, you know manipulate them in any way before you get your capture. Right, right. So basically what you do is, and what I do too, is I work in sequence, which is I work at a distance first, I move in closer, I move in closer. If I don't affect the outcome, if I don't affect my subject, if my subject doesn't react to my being close, then I move even closer and I continue mm -hmm. to move closer until I affect the reaction or I don't. And mm -hmm. then back at home, when I come back and I look at the images, I say, okay, which one works for me? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and um, I'll go. I'll go into my thought processes once Greg is finished with his presentation. Okay. Well, that was it. I mean, the only other shot editorially that I would have wanted to get out of this series would be, you know, extreme close-ups of her hand as she's doing this intricate, intricate weaving, or you know, a close-up of her eyes, or a combination of both. But then I would have really been, you know, working the frame and all of that. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's it's not you know whiz bang, but it it uh, it captured you know the moment the way I uh, the way I saw it, and I was pretty pleased with that. Okay, mm, that's that's my those are my thoughts on cropping. I think they're necessary at times when it's uh you know what uh, I mean it can be you can and then like like Mark was saying, depending on how you choose to crop. You can totally change the uh, meaning of the image. You can abstract it, or um, I mean, I've seen a photographer, you know, cut them into sections and then separate them. But it'll be one image, but it'll be in four pieces. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot you can do it with creatively, creatively, or uh, you know, just to play with the frame. So uh, I think cropping is another tool in the toolbox that photographers have to uh, play with. Explore, you know, keep shooting. Okay. All right. Uh, Dan, I, I guess you're up. Yeah, I'll take it from here. And um, I will uh, say this as an outset. Um, as uh, Mark had presented the challenge to for cropping, and uh, he laid out the details, and um, I hungrily looked through my archive for presentations. Hungry. 
Yeah. What does that look like? Presentations of, of <laughs> cropped images. And I must say it was extremely difficult to find yeah. a cropped image. Okay. I want to see um, you hungrily look for something. You got video? No? So How do you hungrily look for pictures? So I hungrily <laughs> looked. And so I'll start with this one. All right. And so this is a, as Mark had alluded to, a panoramic frame. And so this is uh, of the full frame aesthetic. I did not crop this image. This is taken on, I think it was a, it was a Mamiya 7 with the panoramic adapter on it. So the frame is as the frame was. And so for me, I, I, when I, you know, of course, when you got your film and you're like, okay, you, you look at the camera and you say, okay, this is the hash marks and this is where the frame is. And so you're framing for that panoramic shot. It's different when you're framing for a 35 millimeter format when you're searching, when you're framing for six by seven or six by six, because you are stretched to the limit for panoramic. So you are, you're basically shooting for the frame. It makes no sense to take a panoramic frame and shoot a 35 millimeter format. Doesn't make sense. So you are relegated to that panoramic format when you're shooting with a panoramic camera. It, if you shoot, if you want to shoot a 35, bring a 35. You want to shoot six by seven, you shoot a six by seven. When you want to shoot panoramic, you shoot panoramic and you make it work as best you can. And so this particular image is a street shot. And I'm like, okay, I remember shooting it. And then I remember getting it home and I remember scanning it. And I was like, oh crap, it works, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, okay. And because I was doing tests, I was like, can I do panoramic street photography? And I was like, oh yeah, this can this can be done, you know. And so this is one of the first images. I don't, well, maybe one of the first images, and I think it's from early 2000. So yeah, in 2000 I started to experiment like that uh, because I got the camera in 1999. So yeah, this is a year later. I started to experiment with panoramic, and I was like, okay, it works, and I can do this. And so later on, a couple of years later. I was. Did, I, did you shoot this in black and white, or you? These are all film, it? black and white film. Okay. So, yeah. And so I continue the, you know, to look panoramically and say, OK, what's going on? How can I do this? I, and again, I'm going with this with no intentions of cropping at all. And when I find myself cropping, it's only to crop to uh, create the horizontal horizontal line, because sometimes I just don't crop. It's, sometimes it's just not horizontal. So you just crop a little smidge, you're, you're tilting to equalize the frame, the horizontal line. And so you sort of crop 0.9% of the frame, but it's inconsequential when you're doing something like this. So uh, this, I think, could have been, I probably, and it's funny because when I started to shoot this way, I started to realize there were some necessary things that I needed to get. And one of them was a bubble level. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Big, big, right. big. <laughs> <laughs> shooting street without a bubble level if you are okay with missed horizontal lines you're good uh, but if you want to maintain horizontal lines you need a bubble level and to keep the full frame aesthetic and to keep the full frame aesthetic okay. uh right do, 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 do your camera doesn't have the uh the grid in the viewfinder no this is film this is film so it doesn't have no it. but the camera certain cameras have a grid in the viewfinder it has uh, it has the line, yeah. It has two horizontal lines, which which dictate the panoramic frame. But oh, I see. you know, you can't really. Sometimes you know, it just doesn't look right when you're looking through the rangefinder. Hey, I'll, I'll be yeah. honest with you, Ken. Just really quickly with this particular one, I think the other one is, you know, it's good the way it is. You you could, people could say, well, maybe it's a little tilted, but I but I get it. It's street, so it it it, it lends itself to that. Uh -huh. With this one. Only that area on the bottom, I would crop just a little bit on the left, the right, and the bottom to remove that semicircle of the pylon that's in the. Yeah. In the yeah. Otherwise, just mm -hmm. just that little bit of that one I would remove because I find that distracting. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's it's a really wonderful photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, you're right, and so I'll I'll just continue to go through with that, and we'll just do that. So here's the, here's a frame that I did, and this is a, another panoramic with a totally different camera. Um, the, the other two were uh, standard um, uh, still frame, still lens. This is a swing lens at camera. So the lens swings from left to right when you're taking the exposure. All right. And so therefore, the, the, the exposure is actually uh, 
uh, like one one hundredth of a second across the panoramic frame. So the expo the whole exposure takes about maybe a thirtieth of a sec, maybe a half of a second, right? And the camera's lens is swinging, so it swings from left to right. So, right. so as it spins on its radius, yeah. the cumulative effect yeah. is a hundredth of a second on every piece of exposed film. Right. When in exactly. actuality, it takes much longer to pan. Yeah to cross the entire, uh, to expose the entire sh uh, slither of film that's in the, in the. Right. So there. I'm, a, I'm again, um, when I, my sensibilities uh, always say full frame and I continue to do that. So what happens is there's two things, either it's full frame or it's not used. Really. That's basically what wow. happens. Okay. Right. But see, See, the reason why I said, you know, crop. Okay, keep going. I'll let you finish your thing. I'm yes. not going to. Either, either it's full frame or I don't use it. I, I got a question. I mean, I, I can understand, you know, your personal, you know, commitment to that. But even in, in this image, well, I got to commend you because you didn't get any motion. The number of people are, they're all frozen like a photograph. Because right. I've right. seen some, I've done yeah. some panoramic. Again, but there's right. motion. So yeah. They're blurred or they're crop, cut into right. smushed. But um, like this one, like that, uh, is that part of the camera in the lower left corner That's actually of my the hand. image? That's my hand. That's your hand. That's my See, hand. See, now me, I would want to crop that out. I wouldn't yes. have a problem cropping it. Yes. That. Yeah. That's the sensibilities, and that's what, what brings about the need or necessity within each person to perfect the image based on their history. Okay. Right? So my need to perfect the image is moot. Because the whole image exists irregardless of that little piece in the bottom left hand yeah. corner. Right. So therefore I'm telling you to deal with it. Right. Because I, I it's fact, I I've it seen fact some photographers that, who leave leave extraneous stuff in there and say, Hey, that's that's the frame. Right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that that's sort of my mentality as I go through everything. And so what, what's happening is I'm deciding on myself when I'm looking at this edit whether that incursion of whatever it is is too much or it's okay to accept from my own personal needs to exhibit it or to show it. Hmm. I mean, does that, does it, does that disturb you that it, for me, okay, for me in my eye, uh -huh. when I see stuff like that, it, it kind of takes me out of the illusion of the image. You know okay. what I mean? Um, but I can also understand, um, yeah, that's just the way. That's that's what was in the frame, like you said. Deal with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the the important thing about this image is that um, this is the feast of San Gennaro. It's San Gennaro, and one well, of the things is Italy, yeah. yeah. So what was interesting is that there are a lot of photographers there, and yeah. in this particular frame, there's a very famous photographer in the photograph. Where? <laughs> this is Bruce Gilden. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> right, the Magnum Another photographer. Another like a guy. Oh, he's yeah, he's the Leica guy, right? He's a magnet photographer. And oh, so... Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. Uh, so, Mark, I was just uh, explaining to everyone that there's a particular reason why I was in a hurry to get this shot. It's because in the frame is Bruce Gilden, and this was uh, the Feast of San Gennaro. I'm glad you said that. Go ahead. And so what I was doing was, okay, I, I understood his theories on photography and what project he was working on. Mm -hmm. And so this was one of the few times I've ever seen him in action. And he was walking across the frame, and I was like, okay, great. But, man, there's so many other things that are going on in this frame that but, are so but cool. I, I think, quite honestly, with this particular image, this is a perfect example where if you were to crop it to the point where – the lady in, in all white on the right were on the far right side. You cut off the, the guy in the green and all the rest of that. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you cropped it to uh, Bruce's feet. He's wearing the white sneakers, correct? In the, yeah. the photo vest. Yeah. And then you uh, cropped it maybe to the sort of the just a little bit above the lady with the sunglasses head. And um, the on the right side, maybe just the, where the blue lady in the denim shirt is or whatever it is, uh -huh. just on the right side, just on to the left of her. I think you could crop that image to that uh -huh. area uh -huh. and it would be fine. But that's, that's me. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's take a closer look at this image for a second, because I think I'm not sure if you're getting what's happening in this frame. So there is something written on her jacket. Right. That's important. 
Random. Right, right. I, I get it. I, uh, right. I so think the, the, the inclusion of her effing hardcore. Right. I get it. Okay. Well, well, here's the question. Uh -huh. The question I have is in this particular image, is this a photograph of a street scene that just happens to include Bruce Gilden? Like a Where's Waldo? Uh, or is it a street scene that is of Gildan working. Oh, it happens to include him because he is not ever present within the frame. He is just an addition to the feature. The what I consider to be the main components of the image mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. the person walking toward me, smoking the cigarette. Yep, I and agree. The person all the way to the right with the jacket on, saying "effing hardcore." Everything else to the left of it is additional information uh, that cannot be that can that. For me, adds to the rest of the frame. Does I, not. I take understand. I understand. I, 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 I think. I think. I think the. I think the person with the sunglasses, and Gildan are the main ones. I don't think. I think the the hardcore jacket is uh -huh. its own photo, uh -huh. but I, but I think it's not. I think like it's its own photo, but I think in terms of what makes this special is that you have a celebrity photographer in it, yeah. and the and just how self-assured the individual and, and oblivious of you, the person with the glasses is walking toward you. I think those two elements uh, and, and, and everyone else, I should say those two individuals uh, with all the other things that are, all the other people that are going on in between them, mm -hmm. I think that's enough. By the time my eye goes from the left all the way to the green shirt, to mm -hmm. a certain extent, that green shirt, although it's green, kind of stops me. Okay. You know, it, it's very prominent in the frame, and I don't really follow all the way through with the same attention. Now, if he weren't there, the uh, shirt, the, 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 what do you call it, the jacket or the vest with the text on it uh -huh. would, be, would be more important for me to view. But mm -hmm. as I look across that frame, that guy just stops me right there because it's just he's just so huge in the frame. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, I'm going to move on to another frame because I got a couple more. So yes, sir. Um, uh, and so well, in this just, particular, I just wanted to say what, uh, uh, a compositional thing about that uh, that last one. Okay. Um, I mean, once you once you've identified a celebrity in the image, uh -huh. I think that kind of. Uh, I that kind of trumps everything, you know. I don't want to say that word, but you know, it kind of changes the image, you know. And and well, like like Mark was saying, if you cropped, you could make this a, you know, a photo but a photo about that guy, you know, and him on his search through this street scene. But well, uh, that that's that's my take on it. Go okay, ahead. okay, I, I I can see that being equivalent to titling a photograph. Because you're being told what to do when you're looking at the photograph by the title. So uh, if I say someone's included in the frame, then you're, you're mentally now challenged to think that way. The same way you would be mentally challenged if I were to title a photograph. Now you're mentally challenged to think anything else but the words that I told you to do to think about the photograph. Well, yes and no. But I mean, if he's got some celebrity and he has a name and he's in your image, right? he's going to be right. the dominant, again, you know... Celebrity is only good enough for those who know the person. The person, if you don't know the person, then it's irrelevant. Okay. Well, right. For those one. looking those at the image, know, know. If they don't know <laughs> if they don't know him from a hole in the wall. What does it matter to them? It's only because sure. you know who it is that changes your reference point for the image. Right. But I think. Well, I guess what we're getting at is the idea of that you're showing us that that the individual is there. That's oh. that's. Well, yeah, you're right. Don't and I you guess know, because know. I, I'm showing you that because to me, that was the same reason why I was just describing because he is, to me, knowing who he is. Right. And but I think the photo is great. Who he was, as it is. Right. And, to, and to, to that point, yeah, had I not known who he was, I probably would not have taken the photo. I hear you. Greg, you got that? <laughs> what was that? Never mind. <laughs> we'll no, go no, to... ahead. Say it again. I'm no. sorry. Had I not known who he was, I probably would not have photographed this image. But you, you've kind of proven our point. But because you did. You did. <laughs> but no. You know what I mean? No. And, well, yeah. And to that point, had I known who, if, if I were able to move closer to him and get closer without interrupting him, 
I would have done that, but I didn't. Okay. All right. Yeah, keep well, going. Because I, I, I think we're, I think we're starting to encroach on that that yeah. that topic I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, full frame. Um, no cropping, no intent. Very nice. Right? When Very I'm nice. looking in camera, I'm looking through camera, and I'm saying, "This is the frame I want." I have time. There's nothing moving. Done. All right. In this particular instance, this oh. is a horizontal version, right? Oh. And, and here's the thought. I'm not looking through camera here. The camera is down at my waist. I'm aiming to what I think is approximately where this person is going to be in the frame. And I take the exposure. I go home and I look at this image and I say, yeah, he's way to the left. And there's some things about it that I would like to improve. But is the essence of the image still there for me? Yeah, OK, deal with it. Well, I, th I think this particular photo is all about the alignment of uh, his figure with the uh, facade of the building, with the face of the building that we don't see. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. beer belly, that's all, that's, that, <laughs> when it came up, that was the crop. It was all belly, <laughs> belly and street. Right. And then there's that positive negative space that we, t yeah. that, you know, you think about and the symmetry, asymmetry and how that works and whether that works or not. You know, you see a little bit of the sky. So you, you, there's something there. And so that's that. So and and then, you know, I will I think we'll end with this one, which is, you know, yeah. Would I crop anything of this image? No, because I think, you know, I just don't find myself cropping after the fact. I usually edit while I'm looking through camera. Very nice. Mm. Okay, that's got all one. we got, guys. Okay. All right, so what I really wanted to get to, we kind of kind of jumped into it, unfortunately, with you, your stuff, Ken. I apologize. But it was sort of the ethics of whether or not one should crop. Now, you're obviously in the never crop, Ken. No, I'm, I'm in the don't crop. Don't, yeah, I'm in yeah. the never crop. I'm just saying be mindful not to crop as much as you can. <laughs> right, right. That's what I'll say. But I, I, I think, see, but you've shown all images that have not been cropped under any sort. I couldn't find anything that was cropped. It was right. like difficult. Right. But the challenge is to find something and then crop it and then kind of see if you've improved it in some way. Or, you know, that's really it. It's you know what's idea. funny, though? Um, because I remember, or I, I recall, that there was this notion that um I rem and this may have gone on in Pratt too which was mostly everybody cropped like crazy it was just crop gold although at, at Pratt Pratt? Was a from aesthetic there were a lot of people who were cropping into their image like crazy I don't remember that Pratt. what I remember was it, whether it was <laughs> photo one two three or four everyone really kind of shot to the full frame whatever they were using is usually 35 but the idea was to be able to get so good uh, technically with the composition and exposure that you understood what the materials did and how to get the image you were wanted on that piece of film that was in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the camera at that second or at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea that you were cropping later, I mean, you know, for me, a lot of the cropping that has been done has, has been on the commercial side, whether it's darkroom work or whether it's, uh, you know, commercial work, the catalog work, you know, you shoot the crop. But in terms of uh, personal work and the fine art uh, work that we were, you know, learning to do, mm -hmm. it was never cropped. That was the, that was kind of the, maybe that might have been the only rule. <laughs> was, well, there, there was... There was also the issue back then of resolution. When you once you started cropping in, your grain would just explode. Yeah, well, depending now, on what you how did you how got... Right. I mean, yeah, but come on, that that you didn't have a whole lot of res res control right. back then. Right. And if you started, you know, cropping in too much, the grain would just exponentially kind of pop. But that's if everybody used tri -X. If you use plus X, you could make plus X look like tri -X. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. The, the latitude was almost now, oh, what? But that's part of the Now aesthetic, you got right? like, you know, 50 or, you know, 16 bit, you yeah. know, 200 gig image. Yeah. You know, you can, you can, you can enlarge something or crop something and still have a fairly sharp, you know, or, or sharp image, 
because the right. resolution is different. Right. And because of that technological change, I want to ask you, is it is it now ethical to crop since the since the Ethics. latitude of acceptable oh. Well, wait a minute, because because we worked to a specific standard. You're absolutely right. If you had if you're running Triax, there's only so much uh, latitude you had. You had to kind of get it right in camera, or you ran into the uh, notion that you were losing sharpness, losing uh, grain. You're gaining grain. You know that there was image de- degradation by not getting it right in camera, and now. The latitude of what's acceptable is so broad that, you know, does that standard still hold, or is that, or is that something that is an ideal you should shoot to? But all this cropping that people do is completely acceptable. It, I remember it being a crutch that people would depend on to save themselves from hell. Cropping. And, yeah. Right. Wow. Because okay. if, if 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 all else fails, crop. You know, I can't move closer, crop, you know, um, I can't do this, crop, you know. Um, and in case, in this case, I mean, when we look at um, the 40 megapixel sensor just introduced over the last couple of years by Leica, and they have the uh, the crop uh, tools built into the digital files. So therefore, you can now crop to not only the lens that you have on there, say if the lens you have on is a 28, you can now do a 35 crop, a 50 crop, and a 75 millimeter crop. It's like, okay. it's kind of interesting that they would present you those things instead of just saying, <laughs> what's that, theory? If your pictures are not good enough, if you're not close enough. <laughs> right, that's, uh, was it Robert? Oh, right. Yeah, if, right. Right? Yeah. if your pictures are not good enough. You're, you're not, not close you're enough. Not close yeah. enough. Move closer, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it becomes then a crutch. You to, and to, to some degree, it depends on how much you depend on that to save yourself from, from either... Um, uh, not being a being an inter introvert, so it's not to get too close to someone, right? Because you don't want okay. to get too close. There are a couple of people that I'm following on on social media. They are using a 200 millimeter lens on the street. Oh my god! And they're maybe even longer because what they're showing is about this much of a person, and you know that they are nowhere near close because there are people moving in front of them, and I'm like. Wow, he's got a long lens on there, and he's presenting these as such. And what's interesting is that every particular image has a different aspect ratio. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Wow. Is it, is it working? I mean, what do you think of the images? Um, I think they're too busy. I think there's some successful. Uh, but if I were to give him a grade or at least a percentage that I think he's hitting... Uh-huh. I'd say he's might be hitting twenty percent. Ooh, wow! That's again. So, that's based on my taste. Might right. be different for everybody else. So basically, there's a, a level of artistic integrity that's involved in using the frame, the, the entire sensor. We'll bring it into the twenty first century. The the entire sensor to create your image without the idea that oh, if it doesn't work, I can just crop it. Well. I, I, I don't want to dismiss that as being an option, but I just hope that people understand that it don't make it your crutch. Don't right. make it your go-to thing to save you. You know, it, the best way to save you is to figure it out in camera when you're there. Yeah, get it right to it. Okay. But, now, it, but I mean, a crutch yeah. does, does allow mean, you to walk, though. <laughs> right. But see, the thing is interesting because there are a lot of cameras that allow there are a few cameras now that not only uh, give you the ability of the crop, like you were saying, but they're also allow you to change those aspect ratios in the camera. Yeah. So you're not yeah. using the entire sensor to, so, you know, you can kind of replicate other, you know, machines, other, other cameras. And it's just an interesting, I mean, it's a, it's a pragmatic, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a function of they got to move cameras. So they got to put features in that people are looking for. And that's just, mm-hmm. That's just economics. Yeah. But the idea in terms of the work that's created, you know, is there, and I said this already, but is, is there, a, is there a, a level of artistic integrity that isn't reached when you are photographing uh, and then just deciding to crop later? Or is it just part of the process? 
I think it's a level of competency, man. Okay, but uh, I think it, it's some of some of each. You know, you 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 do what you can until you get better. You know, um, if that's your goal to get better, uh, I think this is a, it can be a creative choice. Um, you know, sure it can be a crutch, but I say keep on shooting. If you got a if you got to shoot from a wheelchair, shoot from a wheelchair. I, you know, I think um, I think it also go ahead get great. And as far as ethics of it, you know, I mean, that's like, you know, the great and powerful Oz God, well, photography God watching you, you know, ah, oh, you, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't shoot at 5.6. Right, know, right. I, 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 yeah. So ethics is kind of. Mm, well, I, yeah. I think, I think it, I think it, I think when the comp, the, I think there are competing uh, goals when you photograph depending on what you're doing when you photograph if you're if your intention we we'll go back to intention if your intention is to create work for yourself there's a lot more uh freedom to sort of choose yeah. if you're cre creating work for someone else uh as greg mentioned sometimes you've got to do horrible things artistically uh like like you know crop out you know holes because you just couldn't get to the right a little quicker than you know you did yeah uh, you know even though you got some more but yeah. the best i'm not i'm not saying that was the best of that series but and you know sometimes it happens where there's a series and the best one was the first one uh, but the other ones are composed better, but it's just not as good as that first one where mm -hmm. you had that weird thing on the right side that was blocking, you know? Right. So, you know, there's, there, it, it really depends on, on, on that. And that competes with the idea of, you know, uh, always get the full frame. So it really depends on what your, um, uh, uh, your end result goal is. is to, yeah, but you know, it's funny though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. The, the, the advent of the zoom lens is uh, a creation or something <laughs> akin to uh, reaching for the full frame. Remember, um, remember everybody's doing the, that zoom motion shot. With yeah. The street. Right. You didn't so, have a, right. If you didn't have that in your portfolio, you weren't, you weren't <laughs> kicking the zoom. <laughs> so the the need to cr fill the frame uh, was augmented by the use of a zoom lens, you know. And depending on which you know which uh, focal length you were you were using at minimum and maximum, whether it was a twenty eight to fifty or a twenty eight to eighty five or seventy to two hundred or a one hundred to four hundred, you had those options. You know, but in well, on a one hundred to four hundred, you'd be restricted, but still, you'd have some options. Right, but that's that's specific to things like sports, where, you know, there are sports groups all over the United States, and you've got they're probably all over the world, and you know, you've got children, kids, sports, and so forth. So a longer lens helps you just get more yeah. expression in the image. You know, you know, when I shot sports, I used to use a uh, a seventy to two hundred all all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and then when the uh, I wound up, uh, I, I stopped shooting sports. Uh, and then like a year later, the 100 to 400 became extremely reasonable compared to, you know, they weren't $10,000 anymore. They were reasonable compared to the price of a 7,200, but I wasn't doing that kind of work anymore. So I never invested in something like that, yeah. but I know people do, and I'm sure they're getting great results because they get the proximity. And most importantly, they get the, the kid's face when they're sliding in the home or you know. they have a beautiful depth of field. Oh my gosh, there's nothing yeah. like the foreground or the subject being in sharp focus and then like the stands, yeah, like perfectly blurred out. I love that. I love that quality. Of well, that's it's bokeh. That's a, not, that's a different topic. We should, bokeh. Oh boy, here we, we go. Should, we, should, we should do that in another one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> bokeh. Depth of field. Come on. Okay, but I know. But like what you're saying, as far as the. Uh, it's ethics, ethics of it, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's some, for some people and in some situations, you know, like you were telling us before, um, you know, you could go into a certain venue or something and there are people who could possibly hire you who would look at your equipment and say, oh, you don't, you're not shooting full frame or, oh, you're not using the Nikon X Smith and Flip Flip and you're not going to get the work. You know, so there are those who know photography 
And if you don't show up and you've got without the, you know, with the right gear, you know, they're going to kind of, you know, think you're not. They just, say, they just so, say go. They just say go away. Yeah. <laughs> go, go. Right. So I'm thinking what's happening. And as I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking of um, some of the gear or aesthetic. Sorry about that. If you don't have the right gear or you're not shooting a certain aesthetic. They don't think you're a legitimate photographer. So go ahead. Sorry, Ken. Mm -hmm, okay. Um, I think what's happening is, or at least what's been happening over the digital age recently, is that consumers, the regular prosumer, dictates what's out there. And what they're needing and what the companies are giving them is what they're basically asking for. So they're asking for the ability to crop on a a uh, high megapixel count sensor. Okay, so you've got that. You've got that added on to the, um, the zoom lens, right? Uh, you've got that added on to a smaller chip, which gives you more, uh, more options, you know? So you better focal length on a smaller chip, right? So you have those options that all these things are coming out. And what's happening is the question is, where do you find yourself in that mix, and where's where's your level of comfort with uh, looking at images or taking photographs and deciding how you want to compose? So if you're used to composing with a zoom lens, bless you, um, <laughs> right? And we're, maybe okay, maybe I am being a little bit um, hoity-toity about it. Uh, because I just think that there's That's a it, it just simplified uh, right. to make it as simple as possible, uh, make less things get in your way. Um, you know, when you when you're faced with options, you have to think about those options. When you're faced with less options, you don't have to worry about it. You know, if you have to think of, oh, I have a fixed lens, I have the shutter speed, I have my f-stop, I'm done. Uh, right then, or it's like, yeah, you, you sort of have to say, okay, do I move forward? Or do I move back? With the zoom lens, you have the option. Yeah, do I zoom in or do I zoom back? All right? Are they are they the same? You know, is the question. I'm are they the same, same as what? what it's mean? zooming in, right? It's zooming in, adjusting your f-stop, adjusting your shutter speed, adjusting your ISO. Simpler or equivalent to having a fixed lens moving, moving toward. In. Or moving back and doing the same exact thing. Well, no, I mean, I think I think the three of us it's know. It, it, me, you know, the, there are the the laws of optics and compression versus the uh, sensor size and all of that jazz. But you know, there are uh, a flattening of the plane or uh -huh. or creating more three dimensionality. But I think I think with the advent of the smartphone, I think more individuals have grown accustomed to using wide angles because uh -huh. they, they wanted to get everybody at the at the holiday party in one frame so they created wide angle uh lenses on the smartphones so you know that's the and, and you want to see where you are on vacation you know what i yeah. mean so I, I think you know previously there was the idea that the 35 millimeter aesthetic with a 35 millimeter lens was only the provence of of fine art and journalists uh, find journalistic photographers who would kind of walk around getting the whole scene with the subject, the sub dominant, subdominant, and all that jazz. When now uh, they're just you know zillions of people using wide angle to photograph their food and have been for several years. So see, see but that that's where okay, that's that's where I would uh, uh, almost agree with you with the aesthetic and the the uh, what was that word you used the uh, not aesthetic. Integrity? Ethics. Ethics of it. But not so much ethics as, you know, because we, we, we went through all the, you know, a couple of years of foundation where they did teach you design elements, you know, dominant, subdominant, whereas with you, when you have like a wide angle or a cell phone, you're just snapping pictures, not even trying to compose it in a way that that has these design elements that, that is appealing to the eye. I've you seen know. a lot. I've seen a lot of people agonize over over their uh, their meals. <laughs> not so much well, in the I'm last year, so, but, but they for, you know they cook for the or most they part. They're bullseye you know, shots. You know, well, whatever whatever the subject is, they kind of go in on that. Well, there's also a 
there's also an aesthetic in food photography that was on a professional level that was primarily the overhead photograph that, you know, between that and the wide angle lens, they kind of merged a little bit. So food, even food photography isn't quite, but we've gone way off the cropping yeah. Yeah. subject. But, I, really, but yeah. I just wanted to know, I, yeah, I, I think, I think the idea is to really, you know, not to crop. I mean, you want to fill the sensor as much as possible. I've cropped photographs. But I, I don't like doing it. And I find myself, whenever I photograph something and I crop it, I find myself uh, very quickly, you know, scurrying back to taking more photographs that are full frame only just <laughs> to, you know, not full frame the aspect of it, but the full frame of whatever it is that I'm using, whether it's a cell phone or a camera. It's like, make sure it's the full, you know. Yeah. Sort like of back to you know, that other topic of intent you know make well, well, make the, a, well basically to cleanse myself of my sin <laughs> yeah. that's basically it right my, but if if you become you are absolved my child yeah. Well, just, yeah, yeah. right and i think <laughs> what needs to be said or what needs to be understood is that we are creatures of habit and therefore we resort to the most easiest thing and so we just have to be aware of what we're doing and if we have a certain set of values that we stick to, we want to make sure that we maximize the values to its fullest. I agree. Right? So that way we're accustomed to maximizing the values to the fullest and not settling for anything less when you have the time to do so. So fill the frame with everything you intend to be in there. There you go. If you have the time to do it, yes. Okay. Okay, right. we we must have gone to the same school or something because we all agree. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. going on with that? What must, what must I be don't that? know. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys got anything else, or we want to wrap it up? Yeah, we, we, we reached the witching hour, dude. <laughs> Close okay. it out, Mark. All right, here we go. This has been the three black crack grads, and we've been talking about cropping and the aesthetics, the ethics, and whether it merits doing. And uh, this is. Mark Skinner with Ken Nelson and Greg Cleghorn. Uh, Shaka, bra. <laughs> talk to you next time. Bye bye. Yeah. If you have any comments, Deuces. always leave Thank comments you. below if you want to. Okay. Subscribe. Thanks. Bring the bell. <laughs>